All right, I'm going to give you a quick run through on Mongo, and I'm just going to connect to a local Mongo database that I have already set up. And so I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. It has some default databases that are um, sitting out here. Uh, so like, for example, I think I created this called movies and inside of that there is a collection called ratings. Collections are like tables, uh, except they're not tables, but they're the equivalent, right? So there is a movies database, there is a table-like thing called a collection that is uh, called ratings. And instead of there being rows in this table, there are documents in this collection. And so if I open this up, each of these are documents within this collection. All right, so what I want to do is I want to open up Mongosh, um, which is the shell. And I'm going to open it up here. And all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a demonstration that I have listed in the Mongo lab. And just so you understand the concept of not really the syntax, but more the concept of how it is schemaless. So let me hop over to those instructions real quick. And here you have them. Uh, I'm going to scroll down to the very last page. This part here is just a demo, and I'm keeping it here for your reference uh, to explain how Mongo is schemaless. So I'm going to just literally copy paste these commands in here. Uh, and let's go ahead and go back. And first thing is I want to show you, like, if I were to create a collection that would insert students into it, uh, in a relational database, we know how we would do that. We would have to build the table and then run the insert. We can't insert before we built the table. Here, I can simply just say, hey, I want to use um, a database uh, called student DB. And by just running that, it would say, hey, there is no student DB, but it'll go and just create it. And now that I'm using that, I can actually uh, say, all right, let's show databases. Uh, and it would show me all the databases. Um, let's uh, say show collections. In this case, there are no collections. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this uh, statement here. And what's happening here is now that I'm using this database, I can just use the DB command. And that will default to the database I'm using, which is in this case is the student's uh, DB. I'm going to run this. Uh, insert into a collection that I call students. And so DB is saying in that database I'm using, there's going to be a collection and I'm going to insert this very, uh, this simple JSON object here. Uh, there's going to be a value of F, uh, a field of F name, and it's going to have Melissa, a last name, an email, and an age. All right, so let me hop back over and I'm just going to paste that in and um, save you the time of having to watch me type it out. Now that I can uh, if it run that insert, uh, what it's done is it's inserted it and it's actually given it a primary key uh, or an object ID that is uniquely identified. So now if I say show collections, it'll say, all right, there is a collection in this database called students. If I now want to say, all right, let's go to look at students and we'll say db.find um, and we open uh, curly brackets, open parentheses, close curly bracket, close parentheses, and run this, you'll see there is Melissa. Um, and so hop back over, and that's what I just did here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to insert a couple more people, uh, Elisa and a Tito. Uh, but notice here, I'm not going to require Tito to have an H. I'm just going to insert it, okay? And it accepted that just fine. If I toggle the arrow up, You'll see there is Melissa, Lisa, and Tito. And Tito, again, because nowhere did I describe what the schema or design was going to be like. I didn't say that everybody had to have an age. I didn't say what was required. I didn't even define a primary key. It just automatically does that for you in Mongo. Let me hop back over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a student here. But notice I'm going to give this student, and only the student, a mid name. All right? And so sure enough, it went in just fine. If I go back here, you'll see that some of the every student has an F name, only one student has a mid name, and they have an age of 42. Now, let me close this for a second and show you. Let's refresh and open this up. And I can actually go and look at my documents in this collection uh, through a GUI, and I can actually put it into a table. And notice here what I've done, right? So um, 
in this case, uh, I just inserted that John uh, Clinton Tuttle, uh, but they did not have an email, but they did have an age. So notice here that this is what we call semi-structured data because when you look at it, um, it has, in some cases, there are fields here that don't exist in other fields, uh, other, uh, other documents. There are some fields that don't exist at all and only in this one document. So when you put it into a structure, it can be a little confusing looking. Let's go back really quickly and let's run one more command. This time I'm going to insert um, a Clint Tuttle. And, uh, but notice I'm going to put in a name of Clint Tuttle, not an F name or an L name. I'm going to put a contact of this email and I'm going to put a current age in. Let's hop back over. Let's paste it in. It went in just fine. If I go and find it, there they are. So you'll notice here what I didn't have to do. I didn't have to define what fields are going to be stored in these collections. Uh, this collection or these documents in this collection. I didn't have to define what was required and it automatically created a primary key. If I go back here and look at this through a table view, you'll notice here why we call it semi-structured because there is a little structure, but it's not structured in columns and rows. So, you know, if I were to go back here and see, well, there's only one person has a name and a contact and a current age. Everybody else has an age. Um, so if I did go in here and say, all right, let's, so if I want to add a filter and I can say age of 21 and you'll see that, uh, or actually let's do age of 42. There are two people that have the age of 42, but notice that only one pops up and that's because the other person has something called, I think it was current age. And sure enough, there's that person. Um, if I tried to look up where last name was Tuttle, it would only find this one. It would not find this one because this person doesn't have a last name. So as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to schema design, uh, NoSQL is schemaless. You can put whatever you want in it. Um, you just have to say, here's the data and I want to store it in, in whatever collection I, uh, I want to store it in. And it puts it in the documents. It gives each document a unique key. When you're building out apps, you typically are going to know the schema. Um, so that is one thing I want to point out is that um, when you go out and use Mongo, there are packages for the mean and mern stack like Mongoose that allow you to define a schema on top of the schema list database. Uh, but there are times where maybe you are pulling in data through an API or maybe through you know uh, some form. You just don't know what data structure it's going to be in. You need to be able to store it and access it quickly and query it. Um, Mongo is going to be able to do that. If I were to hop over here to SQL Developer, we know right now that if I don't have a table and I try to run this insert statement, it's going to say, hey, this table doesn't exist. And that's because the relational database requires you to define the schema first. And in this case, I would have to define that schema. And I would also probably need to define a, a student ID, right? And that would be a number and that would be a primary key. So I would need to have something here, um, you know, defined before I go in and, uh, and if I just go in and insert a value, now I can insert that record, right? Now I can go and I can do the find command in this case, uh, the select command, and I can say, go give me uh, select start from students, which is effectively the same as saying, hey, I want to go to this collection called students. I want to find um, all my students. That's how you'd write it in Mongo. This is how you write it in SQL. The only difference is, is that with the Mongo, we ran the insert and then we ran the uh, find without ever having to define the schema. With SQL, we had to define the uh, schema first before we could run the insert and then select. So there you have it. Uh, Mongo is schemaless, and that is what we mean by it. And there is even some of the basic commands. Um, but when you want to have flexibility in your schema and you want to have um, scale and horizontal scalability and availability, this is where Mongo or NoSQL can really thrive. Hope that helps. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.